Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. The old sound of Steve. You stupid screw. Caitlin. What? You think a kangaroo can jump higher than the Empire State Building? No. <laughs> of course it can. Empire State Building can't jump. <laughs> Truck is dripping right on my belly. Oh man, filling my belly button up. <laughs> Case, but inside of here are all of the previous owner's registrations beginning in 1947. They come with these shims that are made out of Chineseium and Chibistan. Chineseium and Chibistan. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta do the other side. So childish. <laughs> she gets that from her mother. So we do have a start button right here on the dash. Just power on. Stop it. 55 minus two, 53 inches, which that's 52. So we take off another half inch on each side. 52. I thought we were hungry. <laughs> Welcome back to Crossfire Garage and Salvage, a channel dedicated to a dad teaching his daughter how to work on old trucks, like my 47 Chevy Cummins powered rat rod. This week, Caitlin helps me make some new door cards out of some old license plates. We finally get the headliner installed that I bought three years ago. Plus, we got a little backtracking to do on the Cleveland Indians ground screw hot rod C10 that we built. A little bit of starter problem. So, thanks for joining us this week. Make sure to like, share, subscribe. Hit that bell so you're notified every time we drop a new episode. Thanks for watching. Okay, we are ready to throw the old C10 here out in the driveway and we're gonna move the chummins over here to work on, get the interior started on this uh, door, door cards and stuff. So key goes in the ignition, in this way, and then you just turn forward. Good grief. Try it again. What in the world, guys? That's a brand new starter, brand new shim on the starter. What in the woods? I, I don't know what is going on here. Brand new starter. Maybe there's something wrong with that flex plate we're missing teeth or we got some flat spot on it or something I don't know but just back it out of here we'll figure out the starter problem later probably not but that's another problem for another day problem for today is to get the interior started on the Cummins the rat rod Chevy that I built four years ago three and a half years ago and never finish the interior so let's do that gotta throw a battery in there i don't know when the last time that was on a charger so that should be fun also it's a 12 valve cummins so i obviously don't have the grid heater hooked up to warm that intake we'll see if it starts in these temperatures Guys, if you haven't seen this before, it's... Thanks. It's been on the channel, but it's uh, been a while since we've highlighted anything on this. This is a 1990 chassis. So it's I, I've got a 12 valve, 5.9 Cummins, 6BT, um, non-intercooled with a five speed. I dropped the cab from this 47 Chevy on it, took the bed that was in it, which was a hay bed, that was eight foot by 12 and sectioned it down to make a short bed out of it. Um, 
had to lop off a little bit of the back of the frame to make it because I didn't actually move the rear axle forward for a short bed conversion. It is the original wood and there's some places where you can't step. That screw is holding that piece of wood up to it. So, you know, it's, um, it's not perfect, but it's a rat rod and it tells a story. This was a one family truck when I bought it. It had been used its whole life as a farm truck, hay truck. Um, on the family farm. Guy I bought it from, his grandfather had bought it brand new. It just was too cool to let sit and rot. Early 2020, I decided I was gonna do it. June of 2020, I tore my, run, my daily driver apart in one day, got it down to a chassis, cleaned it up. And the next day I started putting this body and fabricating this bed to put it back on here. So Mom, battery is in the battery box, which was the old fuel tank. Turn that into the battery box. So I gotta throw the seat back in it here. If you watched our last episode, you know we have a little bit of a mouse problem in this. Vicinity. Can you go to the other side and grab the seat belts and pull them through when I put the seat up and down? There you go. Oh, by the way, you can't use the steps. What? You can't use these steps. Why? Because they, you can't go up there, they break. No, they're welded back on there. Really? Yeah, should be. I really don't think so. Nope, that one's definitely broken. Yep. Nope. So don't step on that. Great. Step on that one. Here's hoping it starts. <laughs> well, it managed to sprink a small leak of some something. I don't know. Sprink. Sprink a small leak. Oh yeah, that's definitely diesel fuel. Oh, you know what? <laughs> Back of the injection pump leaks pretty good. It's but you know. Diesel fuel is actually not that flammable unless it's under pressure. So really don't have much to worry about, but. All right, guys, you, uh, you can see it's another awesome day here in Northern Ohio. So we're gonna leave this out here cause um, well, it's actually not supposed to rain for the next few days. So I don't know if I'm gonna bore you with anything more on this C10 guys. Uh, that starter and flywheel issue I have no clue what's going on. It starts so nice most of the time. And then every once in a while, it's like there's a dead spot in the flywheel or I don't know. I don't know. I just, I don't know. I've shimmed it. I've adjusted it. We've checked it. It's a new starter. Somebody help me understand what's going on with that thing grinding and slapping like that. And I know some of you are looking forward to this, but I can just tell you, this is the first day. Yesterday, it, there was, there was sunshine here in Northern Ohio yesterday for like six hours. That's the first sun I've seen in Ohio since December 10th. And I'm not kidding. Uh, there were a couple of sunny days that I wasn't here for. I was in Florida and it was raining there. Um, but the, the rain and then the snow and the cold temperatures, uh, we just haven't been wanting to throw this thing out in the weather yet. And so that's why this is not in the garage yet. And that's why instead of starting on Caitlin's 41 Ford, we're doing a little bit of interior work on the old chummins here, so. Chummins. And now a word from our sponsors. Why don't you guys go over to crossthreadgarage.com and check out our new t-shirts that dropped this week, including my favorite, the American by birth, Shade Tree Mechanic by Necessity tee. Grab yours over there for 20 bucks, or you can grab our Crossthread Garage fire department with the thin red line flag on the back, or you can check out our Crossthread definition. It's obviously just the best way to ruin an entire weekend. Uh, not buying a shirt, that's the definition. Anyways, you'll see it on the shirt. Or you can check out Caitlin's 41 Ford t-shirt that says, my trash is my treasure. And of course, there's the Crosshead Garage and Salvage, getting it almost right 60% of the time. Grab yours today at Crosshead Garage dot com or crossroadgarageandsalvage.com and help Caitlin out 
because every dollar from the merch store goes right towards her to help fund the project on the 41 Ford that we're going to be building this year. So stay tuned. Thanks for shopping. And now back to our regularly scheduled programming. All right, Caitlin, tell us what we're going to do here with the doors. Okie dokie. We're going to be making replacement door panels uh, for my dad's truck out of the old license plates that he just hung up all around the garage. Uh, we're going to be using cardboard um, and we're going to trace it and see if we want to go like just here. So this is where the original door card would have been. And on these advanced design pickups, it actually was a cardboard insert. And then the, the armrest bolted in solid to these two studs right here. So you originally just had a cardboard cut out from right there to there. Or, as I was saying, all the way down here. I think we should just do up here and leave this out. There is a bit of a, a turn in the door, That'd so it may hard. be easier to just do up here. That's nice. But I think that's a service panel, so you can open that up and clean stuff out of there. You can oh. reach up and unhook hardware for the windows and stuff. So I think the problem we have is from here to here is smaller than the height of two license plates. So, so we could. might end up going from here to here with one plate and then here probably to here. Because that's still flat. Plate. It starts curving right yeah. there. So you get some cardboard. I'll grab a couple of the antique plates off the wall. Oh, what? I'm going to be using some of these old ones. For years, I've been playing in this and collecting 1947 to like 53 plates um, because that's the advanced design years. So... My 47 start right there with a Kansas, and then a 47 South Dakota, 48 Colorado, 48 Colorado, uh, 50 Colorado, 51 Colorado, 47 Indiana, 49, 50, 48, 49, 50, 50 49, 50, all the way up through there. Did you get the 40? Um, actually, I thought I had a 40, a 54. You have a 47, a 43. 42. Anyways, we're gonna be picking from those. Yeah, could you have found any? Thicker cardboard to template with? There's that seems unreasonable. Fine. Okay, Caitlin found some cardboard that she's leaning on and bending. But inside that cardboard is actually <laughs> the metal that we're going to be using to back oh. these license plates. That's probably going to make both the door cards that we need. I got two of them just in case we mess one up because they're cheap. Caitlin's going to use the cardboard from that box that it came in to template our door, okay? All right, so we're running into a little question here. And I, I knew this was going to be this way because I've been planning this for years. By the way, that license plate's one I found out in the middle of the prairie on Matt and Marty's family ranch. Huh. It was laying out next to an old two-track road. That one might not be worth using because it's cracked here, it's cracked there. No, it's definitely worth using. It's got bolts yeah. and the bracket still through it. I think it does. That's a that's a maybe, a definite maybe. Thirty. I'm not going back up on that wall. How, how wide is that with with this one turned this way? Thirty inches, which gets us to cover this hole, at least. From that bolt to thirty inches covers most of the hole. Come back. You can always just take the metal and make the metal around it bigger. Well, I was, so I was just gonna say maybe we don't go edge to edge. Maybe we leave this is an inch two inches. and we paint that black or something yeah, so it's this, not shiny. This is a, yeah, two, oh, duck, it's 32. So just move it an inch. So just bring it in an inch and then turn this one sideways. Just draw a straight edge on that. I was literally going to do that. And you line up those lines. Well, that's straight. not a very straight license plate. No, they're not. They're pretty beat up. Guys, these Ohio plates, they're like a a pressed aluminum. So these are all like super light aluminum plates. They're really fragile. This one's got a big hole in it from where it was torn off of a license plate holder. 
or where Caitlin just tore it off the wall. I'm not sure. You got holes and impression made from the posts on the window crank and the door handle. So underneath that tool bench over there is a black and blue cobalt box with some hole saws in it. Get that kit of hole saws out. Caitlin's got the hole punch shown with the center in it, and she's just centering this on the holes that she left the impression in the uh, cardboard. I'm so, so. white. Holy cow, I'm white. Okay. Isn't that effective? Best part is we get to make two of these. No, we don't. Just flip it around. Not flip it around, just flip. What am I doing? Where does this one go? Hey. Houston, we have a problem. You got to take the camera with you. Just kidding. Oh, wait. <laughs> Turn off the heater again. So we what don't side are we using? With that noise. Well, we're cutting it right down the middle. I know, but if I bend, I can bend. If, if one side is going to bend, we're just going to have to kind of hammer and plunish it flat. Okay. All right, so just so we don't get mixed up here, we've got the uh, template here, and we wrote passenger on this side. If you flip it over and turn it around, that'll be the driver's side. We're showing oh, the show, air. Oh, showing myself. That'll be the driver's side, and we marked top on it so we wouldn't get confused. All right, only right bottom. No, you don't need to write, if it's marked top, you don't need to write bottom. That is a... <laughs> hey, I gotta do the other side. So childish. <laughs> she gets that from her mother. Caitlin, tell us what you're doing there. I am lining these up. I marked... Um, an inch here and an inch there because they have to be an inch in because, oh, wait a second. That's where the panel mark is. We gotta switch it. What? Over. It's gonna get painted. It doesn't matter where the permanent marker oh, line is. Oh, never mind. We're gonna have to scuff this and prime it and then probably paint it with some of that leftover black enamel that we have from the frame on the C10. Yeah. So lay them out there, then we'll mark the holes and we'll drill holes in the metal and we'll rivet it. Riveting. Well, I can tell you this right now, I am not a big fan of the yellow and black color combination. Although, <laughs> I just said that and then I realized I decided during dinner that we're also going to take that Gadsden flag and put it in here for a headliner, which also means we're gonna to need to take the miner's lantern and figure out how to make that into an LED um, cabin light. So that's also on the project list for this episode. We have a Kansas one. We should just do Colorado and Ohio though. Okay, so I have, I have like three or four 1947 plates and it's a 47 truck. So I would like to get all the 47 ones worked in. So we've got a, a Kansas 47. Well, good thing none of the 47 ones are on South that Dakota one. 47 and an Indiana 47. But I, we were just doing I feel like Colorado. I found some Colorado 47 ones. Hey, I thought we were just doing Oh, Colo hey, Colorado 47 ones. I have. They were on your truck. They were on the truck. Ha, <laughs> idiot. I don't know. That's the that's the historical plate. Where did where did those Colorado forty seven plates go? Wait a minute. Did I have Colorado forty seven? Yes, you did. Oh. Pretty sure. What did they look like? We're gonna find these forty seven Colorado plates, or we're not. Either way, we'll be back in. Uh, you should. Okay, went back and checked the tape. I did not have Colorado forty seven plates on the truck. So we might just be able to separate them and we just have to put a hole here for that one. Oh man, that'd be cool if it was in the O for Ohio. <laughs> Actually, it might be. <laughs> you notice the skunk stripes in my beard I'm getting? By the way, 
It's been a few weeks since we filmed. My beard is on point. Like it's coming in nice. It's not all about you, Dad. <laughs> so <laughs> I've laid out the uh, plates, took a punch and a hammer, punched through the holes. I've got a wood deck on my workbench here, so I'm going to just drill these out for the holes we're going to rivet through. You guys know what paint sticks to galvanized surfaces? I, I can't. I feel like we're going to have a hard time with that. One, two, three, four. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, ah, ah. Holy smokes. That looks awful. <laughs> it looks horrible. So. Well, that's going to take 10 to 7 business days to dry. <laughs> Caitlin, wave at the camera. Hey. Oh, you guys thought she was down there. <laughs> upset. Yeah, that's fine. Ooh. All right, guys, while that is drying, we're going to go ahead and get started on the headliner here. So... Did I get the flag that you screwed in? How am I supposed to put that down? A unique challenge here because this rolls over. So we're going to have to get some cardboard or backer board that flexes and rolls around the corner. Uh, we, we can use a piece of cardboard that I tried to use for the door panels, you know? The big thick one? Yeah. How's it going to go around the corners? We're going to we can cut the back of it. I solve world hunger! No, you, you, did, ba -boom. you didn't even solve the, head, I, the headliner problem yet. <laughs> yes, I did! Solve world hunger. <laughs> All right. Whoa. So... Go to the other side. Go to the other what? side. Okay, 54, 55 inches God. is a good place to start. Where are you going to put these? What? They're going to stay up there underneath it. What about that? 30 inches? Leave that for now. Don't touch that. It's broken, so don't adjust it and break it more. Oh, uh, that is exactly 30 inches. Boom, boom. He didn't solve world hunger yet. Oh. And it's 52 and a half inches. What do we need? 55. We're three inches short. So here's what I'm thinking. Instead of going from that bottom lip, we go from the other bottom lip, and I drop my phone, and we take off two inches. So it's actually 55 minus 2, 53 inches, which that's 52. So we take off another half inch on each side. 52. I solve world hunger. <laughs> the boom. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's what I'm talking about. That's not what you're talking about. <laughs> Makes sense. Let me get this. Don't do this stop, edge. Stop. I'm just trying to help you. You were cutting those ones really. I know some of you are wondering why I'm not moving this wrench. It's because it's it's welded on there. It's a tailgating deterrent. Keeps people from getting too close. Also creates a lot of laughs in the parking lot. And that one guy who yelled at you for having it on there. Yeah, someone got real sensitive about welding a railroad wrench to the back of a truck. All right, I think we've got at least what we need done for tonight. This is roughly fitting in here. A Little bit of finish work to do to get the front further forward. And you can see the back, the corner is actually out over the back. So the other thing we need to do is get the other, flip that master power. Yeah, that one, middle one turns the rear light on. That's just a little LED that I wired in through there. So the wiring is actually up in the roof. I'm going to pull that through the middle and make a little hanging uh, roof lamp out of that carbide um, helmet lamp. So these are one of those minor carbide lamps. So I'm probably looks like that looks like that center part 
here can actually come apart. So if I can take that out and just drill a hole through the side here, through the side to run, oh no, ah. just do that right there. That's cool. I haven't really looked at this thing as much as I should have. That's cool. Okay, that's the plan. I'm gonna go ahead and get this wired up tonight. Grab those at Home Depot when I grab that metal. What are you doing? <laughs> you don't need to test it. What did you see? It's a rivet gun. It rivets. It's riveting. You're riveting. <laughs> Whoa! Well, this is really ineffective because um, well, this black looks really good, actually. It's gonna look really good with the flag. All right, guys, we uh, stuck some foam here um, just in a couple of spots to keep it from bouncing and getting rattly on me because there's a hate I hate driving a rattly truck so you know that's why I drive a 84 year old truck because I hate it so much that one feels like it bottomed out on something that one might need to be shortened up like yet a bit But it will open the door. That's what we needed to do. All right, Caitlin, what do you think? Uh, I think it did a good job. We did a good job. They match pretty good. Yeah. Your head's in the way. Nope, other way. Yeah. Yeah, I, Oh, this you one's know, for a trailer. Like I said, uh, the, the high standard here at Crossroad Garage is uh, it looks pretty okay and I don't hate it. So if it meets both of those thresholds, we get we're it. slapping it together and running. Well guys, it is actually a really nice day today. I have no complaints about blue sky and cool to warmish weather. I don't hate it at all. So, C10's up in the air because I'm going to do a little investigation on the starter. There's Marty. Hey, if you guys see a black cat named Kion running around, let us know. We seem to have lost one. <laughs> but Marty's still here. Uh, the headliner template that we've been working on, that uh, was okay, but it, we cut hey, too much off the hey. corners. Who's trying to eat my pizza? Well, he's a cat with good taste. So I used a different piece of cardboard to get a better fitting template. This is that piece of cardboard. But you see, like right here, the ring, the, it just it creases. And same thing across here. And I just think that's going to show. In fact, I know it's going to show. So looking at the internet the other night, I saw some headliners. I was wondering kind of like what the, I know they're two piece, the original advanced design trucks are two piece. So I was looking at them and I thought maybe I can look at the, the way these things look and figure out how to cut this. And then I saw how cheap they were. And I said, you'd be dumb not to buy it. So I bought a headliner that we're going to promptly cover up with the flag. Cause I still want the flag, the Gadsden flag 
there as the headliner. So instead of working on the headliner today while I'm working on that starter, I'm going to have Caitlin start pulling out this piece of trim around the door here. Goes all the way down around and you can see it holds the, yeah, that's not doing much for us. That That's not doing much for us right now. But I have, that that's not gonna break. Anyways, ah. I have new uh, door seals that I bought Her, so right there. I bought them close to four years ago and it's time to install them. So Caitlin's gonna pull the pieces of trim out and I'm gonna take a look at, at re-shimming the starter. There once was a ship that put to sea and the name of the ship was the Bully RT. The winds blew hard, her bow dipped down, oh blow me, Bully boys blow. Soon may the wellermen come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tongue in is done, we'll take our leave and go. So I threw the camera underneath here and looked at the flywheel. Flywheel or flex plate? Flex plate? Flywheel. Flex plate. Looked at the flex plate with the starter going, and it looks like, as you can see here, It looks like the, um, the the starter is the gear is binding on it, and it's actually letting loose the clutch on the on the the drive shaft, so it's spinning. So I think it's not quite shimmed far enough. And as you can also see, if you saw in that video, the, the flex plate is like not. It's obviously not totally in round. I showed it to a few guys who've been doing this longer than me. All of them said the same thing. That's not that bad. I've seen worse than that. I've had worse than that. There's probably no need to change it. Just shim your starter out a little bit further. So we're gonna try that, see if we can't finally get this thing functioning properly. So funny story, guys. This screw right here, I looked at that a couple of years ago and I said, I don't wanna have to do that. I'm not gonna take this out. I, I didn't realize there I was can't a hole you there. Didn't see that hole. <laughs> so Caitlin's found a way to get it out. And while she's doing that, I'm yeah, gonna I'm doing this. take you back here and just let you know that I found my Goldilocks shim. That's right. Ah! One was too big. <laughs> one was not big enough, and the other one's just right. That's the way it should sound. So what had happened, guys, was I took, you know, these starters, the aftermarket starters, they come with these shims that are made out of Chinesium and Chibistan. Chinesium and <laughs> And see, it's, it says right on there, Chinesium. Anyways. Some of them are marked and some of them aren't. And there's two different types, two different kinds. This one's in millimeters. I don't know what that equates to. So I got out my micrometer and they're obviously different thicknesses. So what we have is the one that was that I put in there was 1 32nd. And I put that in there because previously I didn't have anything in there and it was binding. So there was no shim and it would start sometimes and other times it was bind. Then I put the 132nd in there, which is what this is. And that was so far away that it was actually skipping. The, the gear was skipping off of the teeth on the flex plate. So with the micrometer, I found this one I dropped here is not the one that's in it, obviously but there were two that were 1 64th thickness. And that one is the one that's in there now and the one that you just heard start, which is precisely how I would like it to start. No grinder, no grinding noise, no 
metal on metal, just ugh. So once again, the C10 frustrates and we find a simple solution. That's almost always the case. This, this is the thing that every aspiring shade tree mechanic needs to learn, Caitlin. The most frustrating things about projects you're working on often end up being the simplest solutions. What we've got is a little workstation set up back on the back of the truck here. We are gonna be punching holes through the rubber, um, the door gasket with a hot pin. No. Yes, you can see it. You're always playing with fire. And we're just gonna go around and put both sides. This, this trim is in two separate pieces. So this is the back, the back side of the driver's side door. And this here is the front side. So heat that up. Don't move it around, just hold it on there. Don't point it down at my hand. Just kidding. Stop why is moving. It get, why is it getting closer to my face? Stop moving. What are you doing? You're moving it. I don't think I am. You are, you can move it you, up. You hold it and heat it up. Yeah, because you can't move it. And I'll line this up. Now, push it right through that hole right there. Caitlin, push it right through the middle of that hole and burn a hole in that rubber. There you go. All right, we've got this piece in on the driver's side. Uh, screws here are missing because we got to put the bow in that goes across to the top once we get the headliner. So those will go in last, but um, it's looking much better. We're gonna call that done, um, you know, Putting screws in is no big deal. We're gonna just throw the other side in real quick. Guys, we're not doing a total redo on the interior here. I do have gauges that I'm eventually gonna put in here and I gotta replace probably all the wiring on the inside because I didn't put any relays on anything. I didn't put any relays on the start button or anything like that. It's just all straight wire to the battery. So probably need to fix that up, but you know, I've been driving it that way for four years. It is what it is at this point. Um, so we do have a start button right here on the dash. Just power on. Stop it. <laughs> I got that wired in to the old Ooga horn. <laughs> I, did, I did that <laughs> as a joke because I knew as soon as I was done with this, all my friends and family were going to want to drive it. And I was just dying for the day that they'd get in here and I'd say, just turn the power on hit the start button. I did it to my brother and Tim almost messed his shorts. It was exactly what I'd hoped for. So we've got, I don't know if on this episode I've really walked through the interior, but we've got an old trash barrel for a trans tunnel. Uh, the pair of boots that I was wearing the week that I built this thing, I tore apart because I needed a boot there and they were already falling apart in the heel. Threw some gauges that you need down here. Um, fire extinguisher, eight ball, you know, all the standard stuff you need in a good rat rod, including the old Dodge Ram hood emblem on a combination from the Chevy shifter and the Dodge shifter with a pie cut and bend in it, welded together, threaded on top, you know, all the nice stuff. So, and then we just threw a couple of Serape uh, drug rugs in here for seat covers, which these are really nice starting to season nicely. So I don't want to replace those because they're just starting to look like they're dirty and they've been in the truck long enough that it fits the look here. So, well guys, welcome back to the garage. It's Saturday morning. We're still working on the 47 Chummins here. I'm in the garage by myself this morning because Caitlin spent the night at a friend's last night after a pretty tough loss in a conference basketball game. So she wanted to spend some time with some teammates and friends. So She'll be back this afternoon and we'll be putting this headliner in. We did get our cardboard headliner uh, that's, uh, you know, the factory style. Got it from Classic Parts if you're looking for something. I don't know. It's not an advertisement for them. I mean, it's not paid anyways, but that's where we got it from. So hope that'll work. But it's been uh, about three days since we've been in the garage. Uh, I had a procedure done this week every middle-aged man looks forward to, right? Colonoscopy. Guys, get yourself checked out. I'm 39 years old and I had two large polyps that they had to remove. If I had waited 
until I was a normal age guy and did the normal guy thing and waited three or four years beyond that, I'd probably be suffering from colon cancer and die the same way my uncle died. And, you know, we just, uh, three, four weeks ago, uh, I did the funeral for my oldest son, 24 years old, died of testicular cancer that had gone undiagnosed and untreated for a year. Um, guys, get yourselves checked out for the sake of your family. And of course, this reminds me of James chapter 4, verse 14. For you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Guys, life is short. Don't be stupid and make it shorter. So obviously, Caitlin is going to be back this afternoon, as I just said, to help me with the headache, or not the headache rack, with the headliner. But I was thinking to myself the other night uh, on the couch, and I knew it was myself because I recognized the sound of my own voice, and uh, and I was wearing a new Crossroad Garage t-shirt that hadn't been released to the public yet, so it had to be me. Get yours today at CrossroadGarage.com. Anyways, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, why, why does this truck seem to start really well for about... 12 or 15 turns of the, of the starter. And then all of a sudden it's like, it's out of alignment again. And it occurred to me that I remember having a starter changed on an 82 square body that I had about 10 years ago, maybe 12 years ago. And the starter bolts had like this knurling at the top of the bolt right below the threads. And I think it was for alignment uh, so that it didn't move. And I've had that starter out of this truck, the C10, for, I don't know, a dozen times now. No knurling. Nothing. I'm pretty sure there are factory starter bolts, or at least aftermarket starter bolts, the way the heads are set. But there's no knurling, which means there isn't any alignment. So I went and checked, and sure enough, um, ARP studs have knurling right below the thread. That's going to align the bolt. So I had a choice between uh, $6.99 a piece for the Dorman or $14.99 for a pair of ARP studs. Mm, yeah. So we're going to throw these in real quick. And of course, we're going to do that on a bright and sunny morning. Whoa. Garage door's locked on a bright and sunny morning here in Northern Ohio. Nope. It's raining. It rained most of the night. We know that the shim is right. Ooh, ooh, boy. Truck is dripping right on my belly. Oh man, filling my belly button up. Anyways, what I was saying, we know the shim is right. So we're not gonna mess with that. We're just gonna do one bolt at a time here. That's interesting. Huh. I'm going to tighten that up and just see how much, I mean, Disconcerting. Why did that get loose all of a sudden? Oh boy. Well, the rain has stopped and my belly button has dried out, so I'm gonna check a couple of things here. You can see the knurling on this is pretty significant. These are the Dorman bolts not as um, impressive. But what matters to me is this number here. So we've got basically three eighths there and three eighths right on that knurling. So the knurling is not as deep the grooves are not as deep, you can see there, but I wish that ARP 
the studs had been as advertised. These are advertised for stock replacement for a small block or big block Chevy. So 296, 305, 350, and 454. Anytime you can get ARP over Dorman, do it. But in this case, the only thing available, I went to four local shops here. Um, the guy at O'Reilly's didn't even know what a C10 was. Am I confident that they didn't actually have it? No. Am I confident that the guy I was dealing with couldn't have found it if it was there? Yes. So I'm hoping that short bolt, even though it was, seemed like it was grabbing some threads and then got loose, I'm hoping that doesn't mean that the holes here have been helicoiled. Helicoiled? How do you pronounce that? Somebody let me know in the comments. This bolt seems exceptionally long. That bolt is longer. Are you kidding me right now? Well, that's not right. I swear. Okay, I did a little looking on the Google web and a stock bolt for a small block Chevy is supposed to be four and five eighths, which is what this is. This is the bolt that was in there, and it is four and a quarter. I would think that maybe there's supposed to be a washer below it, but that's three eighths of an inch. I don't think I have any three eighths thick washers. Those are called spacers. So the ARP studs are a half inch shorter than this stud that came out of there. Should have taken that with me to the parts store. I didn't have it when I ordered the ARP studs the other night because I figured it's a stock replacement. It says it's a stock replacement, it'll be a stock replacement. Made that mistake before. I looked online and saw four and five eighths was the standard length. So I went and bought the four and five eighths bolts from the hardware store from Napa. Uh, and he looked them up, they showed as being Stock replacement for small block Chevy. Okay, well, here's where we're at. It turns out there is a application of a four and five sixteenths, which is almost a quarter. It's actually a sixteenth off of the quarter. Anyways, four and five sixteenths uh, bolt for a, a GM starter. Uh, the local store I went to didn't have it. Um, they could get it by Tuesday, but that's after this video is supposed to be published. I took the number that he found and I looked on Amazon and he can, I can get it tomorrow through Amazon, but ah, I had to order a 10 pack. Why they sell them in a 10 pack? Who's putting five starters together for 28 bucks for 10 bolts. Anyways, the cheapest ones we found, cause all the other ones have been between six and $8 but uh, I got to buy 10 of them. So those will be here tomorrow. And just like the starter shim, hopefully this one is my Goldilocks bolt. You know, not too big, not too small. Okay, we got the bolt that was in the C10. We got the bolt that I ordered and picked up yesterday at the local parts store. And I got the ARP studs here that are too short. So these just came in. So here's the bolt that I'm hoping is the right length. Yes, that will work. Could one guy have more trouble with a starter than this guy right here has had? I don't think so. I'm assuming my shimming is correct. All right, we're gonna figure this out. All right, now I'm looking at that and I'm gonna say that's too much shim 
think I've got a 164th shim in there. Pull the front one off. It's kind of hard to see, but the teeth were just barely engaging, and they should be a deeper engagement than that. Pull the shim. I think the shim was fixing the alignment problem that the previous screws, the previous bolts were creating. So it temporarily fixed it until it got torqued so far out of position that it could no longer fix it. I'm going to call it good for this week and if I start it before this video, this video publishes and it grinds one more time. I promise you this, you'll never see another clip about this starter on this truck again. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm just uh, getting ready to lay out this Gadsden flag on our cardboard, cardboard headliner inserts. So the Gadsden flag, if you're not aware, is a early American Revolutionary flag. The timber rattlesnake had been used by Benjamin Franklin uh, as a symbol for the 13 colonies. And so when Gadsden made this flag, it was a warning to the British against coercive, tyrannical government. And so it flew as, on the flagship ship of the Continental Navy and was flown by the Continental Marines during the Revolutionary War. So it's one of the oldest uh, flags used in the American Revolution. Uh, it's one of the most popular, and obviously it has a very clear statement about um, coercive, tyrannical government and the way that uh, people feel about it. So I appreciate its historicity as well as its symbolism, and for that reason, it's not just going in my headliner. It's actually already on a sticker in the corner of the window. See it right up there? Yeah. Caitlin's on her way home from her friend's house right now. I'm going to grab this headliner and start fitting it in just so I understand where the edges are going to fall. Um, I'm assuming these actually tuck in up here behind these bolts, I'm assuming. So we're going to have to loosen these, kind of slip them in. I don't know why there are bolts in the front or holes in the front. Oh, it goes up here. I had it going up here. <laughs> That's going to be fun. Okay, well, you know, you learn something new almost every day. Today is a new day. Here I am learning something new. Okay, I've got the wiring for my light basically sorted out here. I thought I was going to hang it here in the middle, but... There isn't really any good way to do that. I'm going to go ahead and hang it back here where my existing light is already wired up. So I've got them wired together on the same switch. Uh, I know that that's not ideal. I actually might just go in here and remove that LED bulb so that this one doesn't light and this one does. But I don't know. The truth is, when I need a light in here, I'm the only one in the truck. And up until that point, it just looks like a neat dome light for anybody that's looking at the truck. So, I don't know. We'll see. But that's where we're at. We've got this sprayed and tacking up. Don't be touching well, it. It's not sticky anymore, but... The way this works is the glue sticks to the glue. So you tack that side and then we spray the back of this. Go for it. And it tacks on this. Is this the right side? Yeah. Yeah, okay. That'd be really funny if we put it all backwards. We're gonna go, whoosh. Correct. Got it at the bottom. No. Oh. <laughs> Switch your hands. Okay. 
Here's no. Here's what we need to do. Fold this up. That's not what I was. No. You're not giving the directions on this one. Lay the flag down, then we'll put that on there. That on the flag instead of putting the flag on it. That might work. I can see where the center mark is on that. Right here. Yeah. That looks good. I mean, it looks better than what we have at the moment, which is nothing. It doesn't look great, but neither does the rest of the truck, so, you know. Oh. Ow, my face. Get your front corner in. Where's the front corner go? Was down. Oh, I'm about the back. Okay, let's let this bend in the middle a little bit while I get my corner in. Oh, I got mine all the way forward. Oh, it goes all the way in there. And I'm gonna put a couple of screws in the middle here and start holding this in. There we go. First one in. Now I'm a face hole. Oh, I'm not to Why won't you go in your hole? That's your home. Are you too good for your home? You stupid screw. One eternity later. All right, we got the trim in the front, along the side. Now, we need to bring this down and out. What we're gonna have to do here, Caitlin, we're gonna get the bow in here. So let's get some self tappers and a drill and the bow. Once we get the bow in, then we can go ahead and put the second piece of headliner in here. And what we'll do is we'll just throw a sheet across the inside of the truck, spray this all down in here with glue, spray the top of, or the bottom of the headliner with glue, and then stick it up there. So that should be the plan. got the back corners in on both sides so I think we're just gonna go ahead and throw the back bow on Caitlin get it held up tight to the ceiling so this gets drawn up as tight as possible maybe that'll pull this in a little bit if we get the tops in tight are going to be welding on your old truck a couple things you want to do one you want to make sure that your battery is still connected because what they won't tell you is that you can charge your battery while you're welding on the frame if it's connected and grounded Uh, 
Uh, I did charge the battery with that welder. Um, I wasn't kidding. I didn't disconnect the battery. <laughs> but we are going to just make sure it fires up still. thing I want to show you here. So this was hanging on the visor, which was a cardboard visor when I got that truck. So when I pulled it out of the field to tear it down to build it, I found this clip to the visor. It's just an old three inch paintbrush case. But inside of here are all of the previous owners registrations beginning in 1947 and they're all Colorado cards and they go up through 1974 or 75 let's see what's the last one here customer copy that one's dated 1974 on the back there and I think that's the last plate that was on it 1974 when I got it. So anyways, Spanish I'm putting those back in there. We're holding on to those and uh, I just thought that was cool. I thought you guys would appreciate a little bit of history on the truck. So, Kayla, I think the only thing left to do is take it out for a drive tomorrow because it's supposed to be sunny. My blinkers have power. They've never had power before. You've had those blinkers connected this entire time and they've never had power? I've never had this little light light up. Mm -hmm.